Yo, this is Deontay DeBron from a while, the WBC heavyweight champion of the world. And I'd like to give a big shout out to CJ Goodfellow from Sports TV. Bomb Squad, baby. Don't forget to check out our sponsor, The Hell Blaze, at TheHellBlaze.com. 100% all natural products from lotions, soaps, foot soaks, bath bombs, and much, much more. Use the promo code GOODFELLA1BOXING. Tell them your boy CJ Goodfellow since you get 18% off. We out. All right, man, we back. Goodfellow Sports TV. I'll give my reaction to the Jamel Heron and Jonathan Aquindo fight. And yes, I did watch it yesterday. Appreciate everybody for checking in. Check our fight reaction playlist for more videos like this. And uh, I didn't watch the whole card, but I watched Steven Nelson, so I'll start off there. Um, he looked good last night. I mean, DeAndre Ware um, was landing some good shots early on, to be honest. He was landing some right hands. I thought one of his right hands was the ones that caused that cut. But he was landing some good right hands on Steven Nelson, and he couldn't miss. You know, he just wasn't, you know, he just wasn't pressing on the gas. You know, he was landing every right hand he landed. Nelson walked right on to it. And I, don't, I think Nelson is orthodox. So I don't know why he was getting hit with that right hand so much. And, you know, Nelson was coming in, not behind his jab. And, you know, Ware was throwing the one, the two. He was throwing the two, leading off with the two. And he was cracking that dude. If Ware had some real power, Steven Nelson would have been in a lot of trouble last night early on. And what's so, and, and this is a, a, a lower level fight. No offense to DeAndre Ware, salute to Toledo. No offense to Steven Nelson, but the commentary still was biased early on. I felt that Ware won the first round. He might have won the first couple rounds, you know what I'm saying? And they he was landing some clear shots that they wasn't calling. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> they was not calling. I know he almost dropped Ware, you know, in that round, but he didn't drop him. But that was like one of his shining, only shining moments in that round. I think it was the first or the second round. But other than that, Ware was landing the better shots. Nelson was getting caught in between his combinations early on, and Ware was sitting back and sniping. So they both, I think, counterpunchers by trade. I could definitely tell where was a counterpuncher. Uh, Nelson, you know, just, you know, basically picked the pace up and ran them out the rings. And that's the difference. When I watch lower level boxing cards, like local, and when I watch the upper echelon, it's not necessarily the skill level that's the huge difference. The difference is a lot of them dudes is four, six, you know, maybe eight round fighters at best and barely that. Because a lot of those dudes still got a full time job. And the upper echelon fighters on this level, and that's the difference between Ware and Nelson, they are, um, you know, 10, 12, eight round fighters easily. You know, and Ware showed that, you know, he was still on that four to six round level type shit, you know, that amateur shit. And that was the difference. He didn't believe in his win. He said he worked up to winning eight miles and all that. Something in his conditioning wasn't right. You know what I'm saying? You know, and a lot of people get in that ring and say, you can be in the best condition you can be in. I talked to, a guy that actually fought him from Detroit and also, you know, seen him in the gym verse. He said a lot better competition and he looked a lot better. And I told him when the lights come on, it's a little bit different. You know, when you got, when you in the ring, you know, or you in any sports competition and I, that light come on, you know, some people get the jitters. Some people get the hyperventilating. Some people get nervous. It's different. In the gym, you probably could spar 10, 12 rounds easy, you know, standing in the corner, not sitting down. But when them lights come on and when that TV on, that's what separates the the the, the wear from the Nelson. The Nelson performed when the TV came on and, you know, where it didn't. Plain and simple. You know, there's no way around it. And that'd be the difference, you know. It may not be his condition. He might have came in the best condition, but the lights, you know, and the pressure. Like, it ain't no redos. It ain't no, oh, I get off the canvas. If I get knocked down a sparring, it ain't nobody see it. I think the pressure of fighting on TV is what pretty much got to him, but he didn't believe in his win the whole time. He was pacing himself the whole fight while he didn't follow up with his with his shots. And had he followed up with his shots, he might have hurt Steven Nelson. You know what I'm saying? But the uh, cut came from a head a head clash, and when you know Nelson got cut, he just started stepping it up. He tried to step it up the whole fight. He was just running into right hands all day. And when where when he figured out all Weir had was a right hand. And he started to step away from that right hand, or he started to make the adjustments on the trajectory of that right hand. Then he start, then he start stepping up the pace. And when you know where stopped throwing the right hand, or he stopped feeling comfortable to throw the right hand, then you know Stephen Nelson just stepped it up. And you got to get credit where credit is due. He showed that he got top level, at least top level fighter stamina. Um, you know when he got him hurt, you know he went to the body, he went to the head. Only thing he need to work on is just keeping that distance. You know what I'm saying? He kind of smothered his work a little bit. But he made that adjustment and the ref stopped where, you know, 
where was shocked by it, but, you know, they got some people that died in boxing, you know, last year, and they don't want to have nobody dying in the bubble, so, you know, shout out to where he did save one of the commission workers' life uh, with CPR. He is a fire department, uh, fire, you know, uh, he worked in the fire department. He's a firefighter in Toledo, so salute to him. All right, to the Jonathan Oquindo fight, taking on Jamel Heron. A lot of people say Jamel Heron quit. People say, oh, you said Mikey quit. What about Jamel Heron? Um, but the fight, the fight, honestly, um, it was hard to watch. It's like the Lamont Roach fight. Jamel Heron do a lot of holding because he don't know how to control his opponent. That's the problem. You know, he don't know how to, you know, put that jab out there. You know, he don't know how to control that opponent. I think he a southpaw. He don't know how to control his opponent. You know what I'm saying? And that's just what it boiled down to. Had he know how to control his, his opponent with the jab and he able to use the best punch that box, that boxing has ever known, Oquindo wouldn't have been able to walk in on him and lead with his head. You know what I'm saying? You know, he did some great things by stepping to the side and making Oquindo hit the canvas a couple of times, dropped him with an uppercut in the third round. But Jamil Heron just didn't know how to use his jab. You know, he didn't know how to control the distance. And with a guy like Oquindo, he also could have stepped up and pushed Oquindo back. You know what I'm saying? Met Oquindo before Oquindo met him with his head and pushed Oquindo back, worked the body, and, and chopped him down. You know, Jamil Heron is a limited fighter. He knows it. We know it. Bo Mack know it. It's just being 100%, you know. This fight with Oquindo, they said he gave Frampton a tough fight. A guy like this is going to get pressure fighters and some other fighters give dudes as boxers uh, a tough fight. And, you know, Heron just couldn't, you know, he just couldn't find a distance tonight. And, you know, even with Lamont Roach, that was a fight that really nobody won. A lot of holding, a lot of tussling. Jamel don't like to get hit. You know, Lamont didn't like to get hit. Oquindo was willing to get hit. But, you know, he was leading with his head. And, you know, at the end of the day, something for that. He can't see most of the punches coming. You know, Heron just couldn't, you know, capitalize on it because he, he don't know how to you, control the distance on the outside. You know what I'm saying? And and that's just the problem. You know, he should have kept that one just popping all day, popping, popping, popping. But he wasn't confident he was going to land the one. And it wasn't like Oquindo was using angles. He was coming straight on in. So, you know, all he had to do was, is just, you know, pop that, keep that jab popping and sit on that straight left hand. I think he was southpaw, you know. Or what he could have did was he could have just, you know, backed Oquindo up. You know, but maybe he didn't have the confidence to do that tonight. I don't know what they worked on in camp, but obviously it did not work in this fight. But, you know, Jamil Heron is like, you know, he's a cool dude, but he's one of those dudes that you don't get excited to fight. His fights are uh, not entertaining, sloppy, do a lot of holding. He don't know how to fight on the inside or he's not willing to fight on the inside. He don't, you know, he don't, He he's just a one trick pony. He like to, you know, comfortably box on the outside and that's him. You know, he don't know how to go on the inside and grind the opponent down. There's a couple ways he could have handled Quindo. Dude come with his head down, uppercut. He did land it once. Or keep the jab going, you know, keep that straight left hand. And keep and turn him, you know, check hook, turn him. And he, could, he did some of that last night. He just couldn't do it consistently. But Or you could have just, you know, you know, put the high guard on and brought the pressure and start walking the guy down and beating the guy to the body and grind him down. It's When you got a guy like him that... You know, when you got a guy like that, you just really uh, got to walk, got to push him back sometimes. You know, you got to go to the, the pressure fighter, go to the puncher. And he didn't push him back. You know, this guy wasn't nobody to struggle with, man. He could have pushed this dude back, walked him down and beat him down. But he don't have that skill set. But he also talked about retiring. I read as well. He said that his Frampton fight might be his last fight in his career. Um, you know, it is what it is. You know what I'm saying? If this is his last fight of his career, I'm not mad at it. Um, uh, I don't, I don't think he wanted, I don't think he wanted the better champions in the division. I think you have to like rate Leo and Burchett and, you know, Jojo ahead of him. You probably rate some contenders in front of him as well, too. So I think he knows his position. Um, you know, he came down and wait after losing to Memphis Miller, TNT fighter. I think he legit lost that fight. Came to top rank, top rank made him a champion, you know. And, you know, at the end of the day, he served the country. He talked about getting PSD, being a gunner on the top of the uh, Humvee and all that. So, you know, he he came and, and, and conquered. You know, personally, I think Frampton was going to beat him regardless. Um, Frampton is a good fighter. He got good punch and power, at least at 26. I didn't really watch him at 30 like that. He got good movement, but he is chinny. You know, he does go down from time to time, excuse me. So, you know. I think Frampton is going. Frampton probably going to struggle with some of Jamil Heron's length, but um, you know he's going to fulfill his commitment. I think Frampton is just a better fighter. 
think he a better puncher. Um, if Heron can learn to control distance, which that's not easy to do, you don't learn that in one training camp. If he can keep that stick in uh, Frampton face and, and move, he probably can walk Frampton into some shots. You know, to be honest, he probably could walk him into some shots, and he probably could beat Frampton. You know, just you know, just boxing, using your height, using your length, and um. But, you know, I think Frampton's just a better fighter. I think he uh, he probably be world champion again. And then Shakira probably going to beat the fuck out of Frampton. And, you know, then maybe they'd be looking to make the winner of Valdez Burchett down the line with Shakira Stevenson. I mean, I don't know why that's a fight to marinate. Burchett don't bring a lot of money to the table. He been in a lot of wars. Valdez don't bring no money to the table. He been in a lot of wars. Or, you know, Jojo Diaz has shown that he's willing to cross the street to fight the best. So, at that point, Jojo might fight Shakira if he get past Frampton. But I'm, I'm, I'm pretty much sure that Frampton going to get past Jamel Heron. Heron is already talking about retirement and retire when retirement start ticking in your head, you know, he already lost. I'm not if I'm about to fight probably the biggest fight of my career and go to the UK or or, or over here, I'm not thinking about retirement. Now honestly, I'm not. I'm thinking about beating him and then I'll think about what's going on with my career. But him, you know, him thinking about retirement is like conceding that he's gonna lose that fight. And people talking about he quit last night. I mean he went up there and talked to was it Joe Tessator and said that his team made the decision to to stop the fight just like Mikey. When you know people said, "Well, Mikey dropped Salido a few times in that fight, but he didn't stop him." And Salido was coming on hot in that fight. And Salido headbutted Mikey in the nose, and you know Robert, "Oh, Mikey, look at your nose, Mikey! No, 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 Mikey, no!" And you know they pretty much stopped the fight. So yeah, that's what kind of went on with you know that fight, and you know tonight. You know, Quindo was leading with his head. I think they did take a point, you know, but, you know, Heron found the way out. It was a tough fight. Apparently, this Quindo dude gave Frampton a tough fight as well. Did he quit? I mean, yeah, he found the way out. You know, he could have stayed in there and fought. So, if he would say, if he would stay in there and fought, he would have lost. I mean, they wasn't going to let him lose. Unless he got knocked out, he wasn't going to lose that fight. Similar to Jose and Victor Postal, they trying to get Carl Frampton that bag and get him that belt. So, that 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 he wasn't gonna lose that fight, you know what I'm saying? And, and Heron knew that Oquindo wasn't gonna win unless he knocked Heron out. They was gonna disqualify him regardless for using his head. And that's all Oquindo was doing was leading with his head. He was on his holy field, Tim Bradley today. So, you know, at the end of the day, it's some punches he couldn't see coming. Frampton could have, I mean, uh, Heron could have did some things to take that away, but you know he didn't. You know, did he quit? Yeah, he found the way out. But hey, at the end of the day, he won. So it ain't like he quit on the stool like uh, Jeff Horn did versus uh, Tim Zhu. So, I mean, it is what it is. Let me know what you guys think. Don't forget to check out our fight reaction playlist. Don't forget we're on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Reach out if you got a business question, inquiry, response, share video requests. Keep sharing the videos. Want to make a donation to the channel? Cash app, PayPal, inscription. Best way to donate is share, share the video. We go.